It's a good job I don't like to throw things away. I've got some spare underlay. I'm gonna put that down. Oh, it's quite big. It's going on forever. I also bought this rubber mat from Amazon, but it's not quite as good on its own. Oh, that's nice, with the added layer. I wish I had a ton of these, they're not cheap. Do -do 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 -do. Then my first ever drill press. This is a hand-me-down that my dad had going spare. Hmm. Very excited. This was quite sawdusty, so I thought, let's just check to see if it definitely works. I think it needed to loosen some of the sawdust. That's a bit growly. And it was a bit rattly, so I'm just checking inside. It's unplugged. Squeaky clean, but and tighten the screw. Hopefully that's take the rattle out. I'm going to buy advice for this and a chuck key. We can try it. Let's test it. It's all right. I think that'll come in handy for precision work. Next was a bench sander. I can't believe how expensive these are. So why not try a second hand one first, see if I like it, and I can always upgrade it later. <laughs> Read the manual before using... I don't have it. It worked nicely. I've been told the safety guard isn't there anymore, so I'll have to be careful. And let's fast forward. I bought a self adhesive sanding disc for it. Ah, yes. Thank you, YouTube. I want to make sure the arrows inside are facing the right direction. I had to correct mine later and adjust the tracking knob while it's spinning to stop it from slipping. Think that's going to be useful. Now let's rewind to me building my first ever table saw. I've had this Evolution table saw for about three or four years and I've never unboxed it until now, which explains why the box is so battered. Now I'm not going to show you building it. To be honest, the lighting is so bad in here and someone's already shared a video on how to do this. Cranking it for the first time. But a bolt here and a nut there some leg supports, measuring guide, and a safety guard. Oh, and some fences. But overall, I'm not keen on how loud this is, so I'll probably be using this when I absolutely need to. Now, this is just part of a preview of an upcoming video. I'm starting to create a sled for it. But instead of wood, I've gone for somebody's idea of using a plastic chopping board. But the sled, I think, is going to be a much safer thing to use. Oof. Finally, let's crack open this bad boy, the Aldi Ferrix bandsaw. There is a blade in here and I was hoping it was already set up like somebody else's was. Cross my fingers, it's a spare. There's the blade. Now go away while I cheat and watch a James Mancave video of setting it up. Go. Time for the extender. Now I would try and get the table square to the blade, but my square. I need to buy a smaller one. I'll have to put it on my Christmas list. Tension knob. Now feel free to let me know your method, but after tightening the tension knob at the top until I had only an eighth of an inch movement on the blade, I then unlocked the locking nut at the back where the tracking knob is so as I'm twisting that at the back, I'm hand spinning the blade cog to get the blade away from the outer lips. And I found that much easier said than done. Once I got it where I wanted it, then I could adjust the bearings above the table so they're close to the blade but not touching it. Apparently this gives them strength. And did the same for underneath, but that's easier while the door's open. I'm quite nervous turning it on because this is the first time I've ever set a bandsaw up. I like how quieter that is compared to the table saw. Right, go for a curve. Definitely need to work on my cut. I was a lot better doing it on the wood yard. It's just 
place. <laughs> Trim that much off. I think this is going to be my most used tool in here actually. But should I make a stand for it on wheels or just have it on my workbench?